Okay, so what I thought might be more helpful is um, I took the study guide. I've, I've already sent you the study guide, but I took the study guide, and I'm just going to explain the questions that are on the study guide. But right next to it, I'm giving you the actual question that's on the test so that I can show you how this would match up with the study guide. Okay, on the study guide, it says find the solutions where in the test it says which of the following answer choices is not a solution. So basically, to figure out which one's not a solution, work it out to find the actual solutions and then pick the one that's not on the list. So what I had to do here is I was basically doing that AC factoring where I multiply the A times C. So the A value here is 1 and then C is negative 20. So AC was negative 20. The B value, the one in the middle, that's a positive 1. In this case, it would be a negative 3. Okay. So I have to figure out what are the factors of negative 20 that if I multiply them, they'd equal negative 20. But if I added those same two numbers, they would equal the 1 that's in the middle. And we can see that I got negative 4 and 5. Because negative 4 times 5 is negative 20, where negative 4 plus 5 is 1. And so I use those two factors. Divide each one of those factors by the A value, which was 1. Sorry, I'm pointing all over the place. But then you, you actually write the, the middle variable there, the x squared. So that's why I got an x squared right here. So I divide by the A value, which is a 1 for both of them. I put the x squared next to it. And then this arrow is for sliding it to the front. So I'm going to slide this 1x squared to the front, and it'll say x squared minus 4. Slide this, x squared plus 5. That's what I have written right here. When I have these, I can factor each one of those. This is going to be that dots factoring, okay? Uh, difference of two perfect squares. Where I'm going to, I'm just going to set it equal to zero first. I take this expression, move it right here, set it equal to zero. And then I want to move the four, the negative four, to the opposite side. And that's going to change the sign on it. It becomes a positive four. All right. If it had been a positive number, then it would become a negative, just like it does right here. Move that over, it becomes negative 5. Now I square root each one of these. The square root of x squared is just x, and the square root of 4 is 2, but you've got to remember to put that plus minus in front of it. All right. So the answer here is x equals plus or minus 2, or basically positive or negative 2. Okay. Over here, 5 goes to the other side, it becomes negative. You square root each one. Square root of x squared is x. Now, anytime you're square rooting a negative number, that means that you have an imaginary answer. So the first thing you do is get rid of that negative sign and put an i out front. That's why we have i radical positive 5. But because you're doing a square root, you got to put that plus minus at the front. So your answer here is x equals positive or negative i radical 5. Now, if when you look at your answer choices, whatever one of these answer choices is not on the, the uh, test, that's the one you want to pick because you're looking for which one is not a solution.